This is basically um, the Great British Bake Off, but with dressmaking. It's really good. Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and I love to talk about books. And today it's Wednesday, which is time for my shelf indulgence videos where I tell you what I have been reading, watching and just generally indulging on in the past week. It's Wednesday evening, whether I'll get this up before Thursday remains to be seen, but let's just give it a go. My track record with booktube has been a bit wobbly in the past um, couple of weeks, so I'm trying to get myself back on track. Before I start, I'm looking really scruffy. Um, I had my hair in a plait and I've taken it down because the plait was getting really messy, but now I've just got like this weird kinky hair going on, so ignore that. Not much has been happening in my world this week, it's just been working away because I'm very very busy at work. I had a bit of a quiet weekend, um, but I did go and raid the charity shops on Saturday, so there will be a book haul coming your way at the weekend, so look out for that. But I did get some reading time in, so what have I just finished? I finished Tish Delaney's um, Before My Actual Heart Breaks. This was a neck galley and it comes out in May. I can't remember the date, I'll put it on the screen. And I was excited for this book because I knew it was about a 40 something woman who's looking back on her life and how what she's actually done with her life is very different to what she thought she would do when she was a teenager. And that's something I'm always really interested in reading about, particularly from women who are slightly older than me. I think it's something that we all go through and ponder. And I also knew that this book was set in Ireland and that the troubles feature um, quite prominently in the narrative. I hadn't expected to spend my weekend sobbing, but I did. And now like, I hardly ever cry at books but there was something in this book that really got under my skin and made me feel a kind of way about a lot of things in my life. And I'll, you know, I'll save the review for my wrap up as usual, but this is a really, really good book. It's about a, she starts off as a young girl, um, a young Catholic girl in an area of Northern Ireland which has prominent British soldier occupation, there are bombs going off, there's the separation of, um, even, to, even to like the bus they get home from school there is a separate one for Catholics and Protestants, they don't even get on the same bus and in amongst all that turmoil she's just a normal teenager, she has a boyfriend her and her friend are really excited about the possibility of her losing her virginity and all of this sort of stuff. And this is the same feeling I had when I watched Derry Girls, is that there's such a juxtaposition because I think we in the UK and, you know, the, the wider Western world, when we think of war zones or places where there is that kind of conflict, there is a slight separation, they are different cultures from us, often quite far away from where we live and when I watched Dairy Girls it was pretty crazy that like they could be talking about take that and sharing the same jokes and fashions and everything that I totally recognised from school but then there would be a roadblock with soldiers and I, te I definitely got this from this book as well and I'm quite ignorant about the troubles. Um, I, I don't know if that's just because I am just generally an ignorant person or if it just wasn't really spoken about. Like I lived near London in my um, early years, well not even early years, up until I was 14 and we used to go into the city for day trips and things like that and I do remember there was sometimes that kind of like, oh we won't go because there's been a, a bomb threat or whatever. So it, it even actually did kind of encroach in my life but even to that I knew it was you know Catholics and Protestants and then people who wanted Ireland to be its own country and people who wanted to stay in the UK but I didn't understand the reality of what it meant to be living in that and I definitely didn't understand like the factions of the IRA and all this sort of stuff and I won't say this book gave me like a complete history because the troubles are a context this isn't a book about the troubles 
but I, I feel like through reading things like this I am getting a better understanding and um, this is the second Irish book that I've read this year the first was a collection of short stories called The End of the World is a Cul-de-Sac by Louise Kennedy and there's elements of that um, of the troubles in that as well and it's something I want to know um, more and more about because okay I don't live in Ireland but I live in Britain this is our history and I should know more about it so yeah like this book was I, I really loved it the writing's great the storyline is good it really affected me emotionally and it taught me something and like what the hell else can you ask for in a book so <laughs> what am I reading currently I am reading Cash Carraway's Skint Estate and I'm about I think I'm about halfway through it is breezing by this book is an absolute roller coaster. It is um, Cash's memoir of being a homeless single mother. She wasn't young. I thought she was going to be because um, I'm sure it says on the back it mentioned something about her being sixteen or in something that I read it mentioned about her being sixteen. She was kicked out of home when she was sixteen, but actually she becomes pregnant in her late twenties. Um, and it's about her experience of living in women's refuges and working and in the sex industry. Um, just to make money, um, multiple having to move from shitty flat to shitty flat, like the housing situation is terrible for her and her daughter. And she is unflinching, she is really, really funny, and she, you know, she shares a story about pooing herself in public and losing a tampon inside her and having to have it saved by um, a house madam of the strip club that she's working in so you know don't read this one to your kids but <laughs> but um, I am enjoying it unfortunately I fell down a bit of a rabbit hole about her because <laughs> and it was such a silly rabbit hole and rabbit is quite a funny thing she talks about being bullied at school for her teeth and in particular being called like a rabbit and having run rabbit run sung at her and as someone who has lived her life with quite large front teeth that kind of struck a chord with me and so I really wanted to see what her <laughs> teeth looked like even as I'm saying this sounds ridiculous but I want to see what her teeth look like so I googled her but all the pictures she's got her mouth closed and then some of the ones that she does have her mouth open her teeth look fine so I don't know what that was about but I fell into this like gossip site and ended up reading a whole thread about her and I have come away from that wondering how much of this is true there are stories of her taking other people's experiences and writing things as if they were her experiences people have pointed out because apparently I didn't know this going into this and I don't think it even mentions it on the back but she was a mummy blogger living a very different lifestyle to the one that she claims in this book but there does seem to be a reason for that um, and then she was quite prominent on Instagram and sharing a lot of her poverty experience on Instagram and kind of pitting herself against the, the, the mummy bloggers so this caught the attention of people and there's always the super sleuths on the internet and they always want to pick holes in people's stories and people have think, done things with timelines and claims and all this sort of stuff and there's something in it that doesn't add up I'm not believing all their theories and things like that because ultimately I don't really care but if I'm being sold this is a memoir I'm a bit icky about it maybe being I mean I think with memoir because you are relying on someone's memory so they're never complete actual fact and you know there's artistic license with how you want to tell a story and there's things you want to show there's things you want to hide I'm cool with all of that but if she's taking other people's stories and claiming that they're hers, there's something that doesn't sit right with me about that. I'm enjoying the reading experience. I will save my judgment for the end of it. But I have, even before I'd read all this, there was a couple of things in here that I read and I was just like, that's not true. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm enjoying it, but I think I would feel happier if it was fiction. So that's all I can say about that one. And then um, next I will be going on to The Reluctant Fundamentalist by Mosin Hamid. This is about a conversation that happens in a cafe in Lahore between um, 
I think this man was a, a, an immigrant in America from Pakistan. He was living a really successful life. And then 9-11 happened and something's happened or his life has been impacted in a certain way. And he is telling this experience to, I think, an American guy in a cafe in Lahore. So that sounds like it's going to be really, really interesting. I also keep meaning to get to feel the fear and do it anyway. How to turn your fear and indecision into confidence and action by Susan Jeffers. My... <laughs> My therapist gave me this to read and um, in my last two sessions she has asked me what I've taken away from the book and because I'm a piece of crap I pretended I read some of it and kind of bluffed my way through it. This is not true, I haven't opened it, I know I should because this, this seems to be at the core of a lot of my anxieties and my depression and my low self-esteem is this sense of fear. I really need to get to this, but I'm also really mindful that I'm behind in where I wanted to be in my reading, which is ridiculous. Like this, this could be a healing book. This could potentially change my life. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration, but this could be really good for me. And I have not opened it because I'm worried about not getting to these novels that I wanted to read this year. So I'm probably going to give my head a wobble and get onto this soon as well. So that's that for books. What have I been watching? Well, because I am a very big thing about me, I am never cool. I'm never on trend. And so while the rest of the world has now seen the season finale of the fifth season of Line of Duty, I'm just on season three since starting season one a few weeks ago. Me and my oldest boy are watching it together because people kept nagging me that they couldn't believe I hadn't watched it. So I'm doing it. It's really good. Like, I'm annoyed. <laughs> I didn't watch it when it started. I don't know how, because it's totally the type of program that I would love or do love, am loving. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to get through that. I think I might finish season three tonight of a pizza and ice cream night because Wednesday is our pizza and ice cream night. And um, and then hopefully start season four tomorrow. So maybe by next week's, no, in fact, no, it won't be. Um, so yeah, whenever, whenever I get around to finishing it, then I will tell you what, what my thoughts were on the um, finale of season five. I don't know, is season five supposed to be the last season or is it just i don't know why there's so much hype around this season because it hasn't really been on my radar before but it's fab so it is about um an anti-corruption unit within the police and basically each season seems to be they are working on a different police corruption case but there does seem to be a link between all the cases like things are woven through and there's people who aren't what they seem and it's all cloak and dagger and it's gangster and all that sort of stuff it's really fun it's got some big names in it as well like literally I'm the sort of person I will google if I've seen someone and I'm like I've seen them in something before so I've done a lot of scrolling through IMDB and <laughs> that has been almost like a side game to watching Line of Duty. But the main characters are Martin Compton, who um, I knew from being in the film that's set like right across the water from me. I can see it out my window from here. Um, Sweet 16, the Ken Loach film that's set in Greenock. And Vicky, I've forgotten her surname, but she was in the This Is England film and TV program <laughs> um, and she's fabulous as well and it's just it's it's great it's great if you haven't watched it if you're even more behind than me go watch it what else have I been watching I finished season three which I believe is the last season um, of Keeping Faith which is a Welsh drama I started watching it just after um, I kicked my husband out of the house because my mom had recommended it to me it's about a woman whose husband goes missing um, and she's a lot though they're both lawyers he's disappeared they think he's like drowned or something I don't know and then all this other stuff comes out about him having an affair being involved in like really shady things it's really good the woman who plays Faith who's the main character is a phenomenal 
actress and I have a huge crush on her um, and it's just it's great it's really good and I, I am a sucker for a Welsh accent so it's a delight to both watch and listen to so that's really good and also um, the Great British Sewing Bee has been back on for a few weeks and I really like that it makes me feel incredibly guilty that I haven't even touched my sewing machine since I think before the start of Covid um, which is ridiculous because you know I should have been using that time to perfect my skills blah, blah, blah. Um, and it really makes me wish that I had the time to get back into learning how to make clothes because I was making some headway I'd made a skirt I'd made a top I was getting there I did a really good invisible zip um, and then and then it just stopped so um, yeah I watched that for inspiration which I probably will never act on but Joe Lysa is the presenter he has been for the past few seasons and he's hilarious he's really good with the contestants if you don't know what this is this is basically um the great british bake-off but with dressmaking it's really good so yeah that's what i've been reading and watching recently um oh <laughs> i'm kind of famous um i was featured in the mastercard adverts for the brit awards last night um it's kind of cringe but my one of my TikTok videos. It was a dance that if you did it, you would be entered into a competition to win tickets to the Brit Awards next year. And I've always wanted to go to the Brit Awards. So I entered it. Of course, I didn't win the tickets, um, but they used my video in an advert. So that was pretty hilarious. I'll see, I, I actually filmed the telly when I was watching it. So I'll, <laughs> it's so clear, so funny, like, these things look much better on TikTok than they do on the big screen. I also saw the trailer for the Disney Cruella de Vil film and I cannot wait until that comes on to Disney Plus because she has been, her and Ursula, they are like my favourite Disney villains. I really love it. Oh, and Scar as well. Um, but. I think it looks really good. I quite like Emma Stone. I think she's going to be quite good at playing that character as well. So that's what I'm excited for. And yeah, I've just got to get through this week at work. Hopefully the weather does seem, we've got blue skies at the moment. It has been raining all week, but hopefully the weather will hold out. I'm hoping to get into the garden at the weekend and do a bit of, I can't even call it gardening. I just randomly pull out weeds and hope for the best. That's my plans for the weekend. What will you be doing? What's going to get you through the end of this week? What have you set your sights on? And also, what are you reading? What have you just finished? And what are you going to be reading next? I would love to hear. And until next time, bye. But that on my... That...